We spend hours training our bodies, fine-tuning our bodies, but what about our minds? I mean, mental training is obviously less tangible. We can't just upload it and add it to our weekly training volume. However, it's hugely beneficial to us as athletes and towards our performance. So today, we are delighted to be joining with Dr. Jim Taylor, who has a PhD in psychology. He is a leading authority in psychology for sports, particularly endurance sports and triathlon. In fact, he's actually a two-time Ironman finisher and has an upcoming book with GCN. So let's head on in and meet him. Uh, if you don't think you can do something, you're right. And so how you think, what you say to yourself, has a huge impact on what your body's capable of doing. And I have this basic little reminder that I always tell myself and I tell my triathletes is what I call the three Ps. Um, when it gets hard, well, welcome, Dr. Jim. Thank you ever so much for joining us today. Now, I know you've got a lot of experience having worked with athletes across a whole range of sports, but also particularly triathlon. And you've also got triathlon experience yourself, I believe. Um, very accomplished age group athletes mm -hmm. and off to the world champs as well this year. Indeed, two world champions, one in Montreal and then one in Abu Dhabi. Brilliant. Well, congratulations for that. Thank now, uh, hopefully with that, you'll be able to kind of narrow in on some of the mental strengths and toolbox um, that we're going to work on today. Now, we've got athletes, I guess, across a whole range here. So from beginners doing their first triathlon through to athletes like yourself or going to the Ironman World Championships. So let's dive straight on into this. How important is kind of the mental strength for triathlon, both in training and in racing? Yeah. Well, Mark, this is a question I ask of every audience I speak to in triathlon and every individual. And they all say, as are more important. But then I ask, uh, how much time do you spend in your mental training? And they sort of look at me sheepishly and go, hem and haw. And because clearly very little is done. Now, realistically, um, there's no doubt that triathletes do a lot of mental stuff. They try to motivate themselves. They try to be positive. They try to relax before the swim. But there's a difference between mental stuff and mental training. Just like there's a difference between going for a bike ride every couple of weeks and getting on the bike every day with a goal in mind and a training program. And so my approach is really to take mental training and think of it in the same way as you do your, your, your conditioning in, in all the different disciplines. It's got to be comprehensive. It has to be structured. It has to be consistent. Um, now, you also talk about mental muscles. Um, I really like this analogy. So what is that? I mean, can we strengthen them? How do we work on this? Sure. Well, I use the term because people, obviously triathletes can relate to muscles. And the mind, I suggest, is made up of a variety of different muscles. And there are five main mental muscles that I focus on in my work with triathletes. Uh, motivation, confidence, um, intensity. What I mean by that is this range from really relaxed physically and mentally to, you know, to terrified. And somewhere triathletes perform their best, partially dependent upon the event and partially dependent upon just what their personality is. Um, focus, obviously the ability to focus effectively is super important. And then of course emotions. Emotions for me are so powerful in triathlon because as you well know, it, the longer the race, the more the, onion, the emotional onion gets peeled back until you're so raw and you can feel so many powerful emotions, both negative like fear, frustration, anger, and despair, but also positive ones, elation, excitement, pride, inspiration, and joy. Brilliant. Now, how does visualization sort of fit into this as well? Because I mean, I, I try to use this a little bit in my pro career. Um, I found it very helpful, but how do you sort of teach or implement that for with athletes. Sure, so before I get into that, into visualization, let me, let me just say that another big thing that I do with athletes is I help them develop a mental toolbox. Okay. And so let's use the, the metaphor of a flat tire. That um, if you get a flat tire during the, the ride section of a, a training ride or a race, uh, you pull over and you, uh, if you don't have the tools, meaning the iron, the, 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 the spare tube and the inflator or the pump, or you don't know how to use them, mm -hmm. you're stuck. And it's a great metaphor because invariably in triathlon, you're going to have a lot of flat tires, certainly mentally as well as physically. And so it's a matter of having the tools to fix those flat tires. And so, for example, um, before the swim, uh, really, ang really anxious, pull out the relaxation tool. I'm starting to have doubts part, part, part of the way through the bike because you still have a long way to go. Pull out the confidence tool. Um, in training, uh, you know, you don't feel like getting up at five in the morning when it's raining out. Pull out the motivation tool. And so having those tools, and the great thing about the mental toolbox, it doesn't weigh anything. So it doesn't make your bike heavier. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so having those available is really important. And, and they're, they're really not that complex. They're pretty simple, but you have, to, you have to have them and you have to use them. 
So, going to visualization, I use the term mental imagery, but they're, yeah, they yeah, mean yeah, the perfect. same thing. And basically, for people who aren't familiar with it, it basically involves um, see, closing your eyes and seeing and feeling yourself performing the way you want. And for me, it is the most powerful mental tool. And there's a large body of research showing that when you do imagery alone, you can get better. And when you combine imagery with actual performance, you can get even better faster. And so what's interesting about imagery, it's not just picturing stuff in your head. When you imagine yourself swimming, for example, you're actually triggering the motor programs. And you can work, you can improve your technique simply by doing imagery. And you can use it, for example, in different aspects of your training, like, um, like uh, swimming uh, on your bike. Imagine yourself on, in transition on your bike, how you want to think, how you want to feel. Um, and then also in preparation for race day. So, so before the week or two before the race, before races, I would always, for example, start to imagine myself what I, what I want to feel like, what I want to think um, as I head toward the start of the swim. Um, I do a ton of imagery with transition because that is the most mm. underappreciated yeah. and undertrained aspect of triathlon because it's really a, it's really a quintathlon if you think about T if you add in T1 and T2 and it's it's fascinating to watch even the pros totally screw up their their uh, their transitions and so imagine yourself performing the way you want thinking and feeling the way you want um, and not not just like this perfect performance because in triathlon nothing ever goes as planned yeah. And so, so being realistic and, and seeing some of the struggles that you're going to have, that, that you, you know, the last mile or two of, of a, let's say, an Olympic distance run, you're not going to be just loping along like, uh, like Iliad Kipchoge. Kip you're going to be hurting. But if you can imagine yourself in that situation, then you can prepare for when that happens. You've already got your mind programmed to keep pushing to the end. Nice. I like that. Um, now, obviously, that's phys we've, we've talked a lot about physiologization there, but I'm not going to go into every single bit of the toolbox. But I guess some people may be watching this thinking, oh, that's great, but I'm going to pluck confidence out of this toolbox. How do I work on that? How do where does that confidence suddenly come from? I can't just go, right, let's, let's hit the confidence uh, button. Yeah, confidence is one of those things that you can't just use and affect. So, for example, let's say you get nervous before the start of a swim. Yeah, you can do breathing, you can do relaxation, and that has an immediate effect. But with confidence, confidence is something you train. Again, just you, you train it just like a muscle. And so some key aspects of, of training the, um, the confidence muscle is the, the foundation of all confidence preparation. My goal when I work with athletes is not to say, you're gonna win, you're gonna podium, whatever. It's when you get to the line to begin your swim, can you say to yourself, I'm as prepared as I can be? Because ultimately that's all you can do. And you know, as we well know in triathlon, um, things happen in, in, in the sport, you can't control. But all you can do is control your preparation. So if you put in the work, you're going to be pretty confident. Um, another really powerful tool that you have to have in your toolbox is, is self-talk. Um, Henry Ford, who invented uh, cars, at least in the U.S., um, had a saying, uh, if you don't think you can do something, you're right. And so how you think, what you say to yourself, has a huge impact on what your body's capable of doing. Because invariably, during the course of a race, whatever the distance, your body starts rebelling. It, your body looks up at your mind and goes, Mark, we can stop now. Yeah. Well, I get the point. Um, and if your mind goes, okay, you're going to slow down or you're going to quit. But uh, we have this capacity, and this is the strength of the mind, to tell our body what to do. And so it's with self-talk. And I'm not saying, you know, toward the end of an Ironman saying, oh, I'm having a great time here. This is super fun. <laughs> you're not going to believe that. But what you can say is like, keep going. This is what I've been working for. Let's keep at it. Finish strong. Dig deep. Those are some of the key words, key phrases I use in, when I'm out there. And, and, but what's important with all these things is you can't just decide to use them on race day. Just like you can't just decide I'm going to um, you know, use my power on the bike. You train it. And so you build all these things into your training program. So when you're out on a training ride, when you're doing a swim and you're bored to all get out because it's, you're just going back and forth in the pool, you use some of these tools and you become good at them and they get ingrained into you. And so when you start to use them in the race, they're already there so and you know it. It's second nature. It becomes second nature, yeah. exactly. So instead of going to the dark side, if you're into Star Wars, um, which we all have done in a race, um, we start to go like, oh my God, this is, this is not, this is hard. And you go, but wait a minute, this is why I'm out here. And so you immediately have that awareness and hopefully you don't go to the dark side at all. But again, it's part of the deal as a triathlete. Mm -hmm. um, but you have that right there and you can go, okay, I got to be more positive here. And so you, you, you've trained that self-talk, you know how to use that tool, and then you can use it and it affects the way you think, the way you feel, and ultimately your ability to 
keep grinding away. Are there any other tactics now with, um, I mean, particularly talking sort of the longer distance events in terms of, you know, it can be overwhelming thinking, Crikey, I'm running at 3.30 per kilometre pace, I've still got another 10k to go. How you break that down and um, manage, you know, the amount of pain you're feeling, obviously using the toolbox, but are there any other tactics we can use there? Well, I, I think their uh, uh, focus is a really big part of that. And it's easy to start thinking about the struggles you've already had or the struggles you're going to have ahead right. instead of what do I need to do right now? And I have this basic little reminder that I always tell myself and I tell my triathletes is what I call the three Ps. Um, when it gets hard, um, focus on positive. Like this, this is, in a, in a, what's interesting about triathlon is like, if it wasn't difficult, we wouldn't do it. It wouldn't be satisfying. But again, our body is telling us, it's screaming to stop. Mm -hmm. And so just focusing on, this is the goal. This is why I'm doing it. I'm gonna finish strong. So focus on positive. The second is process. You can't think about the finish line because it's still a long ways away, especially the longer distances. And so focus on, on what do I need to do to keep it going? And it might be breathing, relaxing the shoulders, adjusting my pace, my stride, because you, 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 know, you can have a goal of running a 330, but your body might have some arguments with that point and you might have to go to 345. Or there might be like, I'm feeling pretty good. In my first Ironman, um, coming off the bike, um, I was just sort of, trying to just finish, uh, but the last 10K, I'm feeling really good, so I took it home, and I crushed it. And so you can, it can go in both directions. Um, so pr the, the second P is process, and the third is present. What do I need to do now, in this moment? I can't change the past, it's already gone. The only way to control the future is control now. So what do I need to do mentally, physically, nutritionally, um, to, to keep it going? And what happens then is if, if you still have a ways to go, you can also just break it down into small segments. So I'm just going to get to the top of the hill. I can do that. Mm -hmm. you, it, but if you think like, oh my gosh, I have another six miles or another three miles or whatever your distance is, that's overwhelming. And, and certainly the longer distance races like an Ironman, the distances are absolutely overwhelming. To think you're going to be out there for an age grouper, you know, 14, 15, 16 hours. You can't think, the, think of that. Just like right now, where am I at? What am I doing and what do I need to do to keep going each step of the way? Yeah, that's good. And I think that's actually really relevant for triathlon because as we mentioned before, things go wrong and you, it can be, you can end up just getting carried away thinking, oh, I've got to catch up, I've got to fix what I've, what's gone wrong now and actually just focusing on the there and now getting the job done and working through it. So. Right, and, and I ex experienced that um, a while back. I did Oceanside and I got a flat mm -hmm. when I was in the, on the Marine base. And I'd never gotten a flat before, but I did know how to change the tire. I had the tools and I had the skills to change the tire. And so I just said, okay, let's just see what I can do. And I, I, I changed in like seven minutes. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then I just got back on my bike and said, okay, you know, I'm gonna be seven minutes slower, but that's the way it is. And I'm not trying to qualify for anything super big. Um, and, um, and so I just sort of got back into the rhythm of it. And the flat tire was in the past. And this, this is ahead. And this is what I'm doing now. And you probably had a great race. I ended up having a great race yeah. aside from the flat, yeah. for sure. I, I've definitely done the opposite of that. And I had a incident coming out of T1 um, and lost touch with the front of the race. And I went crazy for about 20K on the start of a 70.3 and ruined the entire race because yeah. I was <laughs> just focusing so much on what had just happened. Um, now, uh, also people may be watching this thinking, oh, this is, it all sounds brilliant, but I'm already struggling to fit in the swim, the bike, the run, my job, my family. How do we have time to fit in all of this stuff as well? Yeah, I mean, time for me is our most precious resource because it's non-renewable yeah. and it's full. Yeah. And, and so that's the great challenge of really whatever distance. I mean, I, right now I'm focusing on Olympic and sprint and it still takes up a huge part of my life. And I have a family, of course, and I do work. And so, uh, so the great thing about mental training is it doesn't take the hours that it takes to do physical training, to do your conditioning. In fact, you can build it in to all aspects of your training. So in, in the pool, if you're working on technique, focus is the single most important thing when you're working on technique. Because if you don't focus on it, you're going to go back to old technique. And then you, ingrain, you continue to ingrain bad habits, which makes it harder to learn new habits. So um, a very powerful um, tool in your focus tool um, toolkit is uh, keywords. So let's say you're thinking, like, I'm super into high elbow. And so now it's um, whenever I'm swimming and working on technique and drills, it's like high, high, high. And that's constantly reminding me to have the high elbow. 
And so that's a situation where it doesn't take extra time and it actually makes your training better. Mm, I used to have one in running, um, or still do. Um, it's um, called Arrows. And it means nothing to anyone else out there, but it's something a coach brought in years ago for us. And it was just literally about the knee drive coming up and just that sort of arrow shape that the leg would make. And actually, towards the end of a long race, when you're, you start dropping and you're not lifting your knees up enough, actually, it's just a good cue going. And it does more than just getting my knees up is actually just an overall kind of cue to get my form up, just think about everything and also just thinking about my technique rather than the pain I'm feeling at the time. So it's really good. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a great thing about a keyword. Not only does it focus you on the thing you want to focus on that'll help you keep going, but it also takes your mind off the other stuff, the bad stuff, for sure. And so in terms of, in terms of um, cycling, uh, breathing, relaxing the shoulders. Those are all really powerful tools you can use. Um, re reminding yourself to continue to, to hydrate and to fuel is really important. And so, so all the things that I talk about for, for motivation, confidence, intensity, focus, emotions, um, these are things that you can build into every aspect of your training. And it's so important because just like anything else, if you don't do it in training, you're not gonna do it in a race. And, and a reverse side of that is whatever you, do in a in, you need to do in a race, you better first do it in training. And that goes again for, for nutrition or for the mind. And so if you practice these things in training, it becomes, like you said, second nature. And when you have, the simil you have similar challenges in the race, then you've got them. Because in the moment, it's super hard. I remember at my first Ironman at 60 miles, like between 60 and 90, I find everybody has a nutritional crisis. Well, no, excuse me, they have, a, they have a, an emotional crisis. Because you've been out there a long time yeah. and you still have a long way to go. But, um, but I trained myself when I was doing my, my, my long rides was that, first of all, that that's going to happen. So it wasn't like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? But I also, I knew that that emotional crisis was really a nutritional crisis. And so I had a plan. But if you don't have a plan and you're in that situation, emotions are going to overwhelm you and they're, they're just gonna, you're going to succumb to them. And so that's why it's so important to have a plan, to, to expect the unexpected. Think worst case scenario, because best case scenario in, in your career, how often was their best case scenario? Very few, yeah. Very yeah. few, exactly. <laughs> and so in the moment, you just can't step back from the experience, from the struggles and go, okay, what do I need to do here? Let's think this through. It's too overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so what you can do though, is if you have done it in training, then it's like, oh yeah, I've got a plan. This is what I do here in the race. It's been brilliant so far. Um, one final question, um, and, and simply quite a broad one really, is there a final tip you would give to any of the triathletes out there from beginner through to your pro athletes? Yeah, so, and this isn't, this isn't really mental training so much as perspective, because I find that you can have a, a great mental tools and strong mental muscles, but if you go into a race with the wrong attitudes, then you're almost done before you, get, before you even get into the water. And so really thinking about what kind of attitudes, how you're approaching it sort of philosophically, like why you're out there, and make sure that it's healthy and positive. Like I, I think most hopefully triathletes do triathlon because it's, it's a, it provides them with meaning, it provides them with, with a tremendous fulfillment and joy and also connection because th that, that community out there and you know the saying misery loves company um, and you know maybe that's a part of the triathlon community, mm -hmm. um, this, the social aspect. But just really reminding yourself as you head into a race or even just when you're doing, you know, when you're on your trainer and you're suffering through a really tough interval workout, remind yourself why you're there. Because again, yes, it's super hard and it's painful, but when you get off, I, I can tell you that, that, you know, talk about the high after I've come in from a really hard workout, I'm euphoric. Yeah. And there are very few aspects of life where you, can, where you feel such, at least for me, that, that incredible sense of joy and accomplishment. I often remind people of that as well when they're going to enter races. It's like, why are you doing the sport? Enter the races that you want to enter. I think a lot of people, and I've done this before, I get hung up on, I should enter this. I need to qualify for this because everyone else is doing it. It's actually like, that's fine if you want to do that, but not everyone does. And um, I've definitely found myself in that situation before when I was racing short distance. I actually was at a race in um, Czech Republic and I realized I didn't want to be there. Um, and yeah, it was a big kind of eye opener to me. So um, actually, you know, some athletes, maybe they just, they actually want to go and do their local try or maybe not even do any triathlons for a while, whatever it may be. But I think that's really important just to sort of reflect on why you're doing this. And ultimately you got into the sport because you enjoy it, right? Right, and what's tricky about triathlon is that you see so many, uh, so many other people with the super fancy bikes and the aero helmets mm -hmm. and they're going to Kona or they're going to, you know, age group world championships or whatever. And that's like icing on the cake. 
And, and getting back to just like, you can ride, I, like I live near San Francisco and uh, skate from Alcatraz. I've seen guys doing Alcatraz on beater bikes, yeah. you know, with, with, with straight Crazy. bars and wide tires. And I'm thinking like, that's the most beautiful thing yeah, because yeah. they don't care. They're just out there having the experience of swimming in, the, in this crazy water in the San Francisco Bay and doing this crazy ride and this crazy run. And, um, and that's really what it's about. And you can have sort of result aspirations if you want. But, but it should start with the, the joy, the meaning, the satisfaction you get from just being out there and challenging yourself physically, being in nature and being around other people who are, who are sharing the same kind of experience. Well, thanks ever so much, Dr. Jim. This has been really interesting. I um, hope you guys out there enjoyed it. I've definitely learned a lot today. I think I'm going to be asking quite a few questions when we've hit end record as well. Um, do stay tuned for that upcoming book with GCN. Um, make sure also that you're subscribed to the channel if you're not doing so already.